We're pretty far gone in the rabbit hole of space exploration, aren't we? Perhaps it's something to do with Earth slowly becoming inhabitable. Or maybe it's simply because humans love discovering new things. Whatever the case may be, NASA does not want to stop, and we're here for it. We're here with the latest on NASA's mission to the moon. And quick disclaimer, it wasn't a success. First and foremost, here's a breakdown of what we're talking about. It seems as if Artemis simply can't seem to catch a break. And in case you were confused about what we mean by that, don't worry, we're going to explain. Artemis is a series of missions that will explore the moon in preparation for missions to Mars. To sum up, Artemis, named after the Greek moon goddess, is a NASA program that successfully launched people to the moon for the first time in 1969. It is a direct descendant of Apollo. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson stated during a press conference on August 3rd that researchers working on the Artemis program have an eye on future exploration that entails humans journeying farther into the harsh, high-radiation terrain of space than ever before. In addition to using technology to assess the physiological effects of deep space travel on future astronauts, Artemis 1 gives researchers the chance to fully test the capabilities of the new spaceship, Orion. Now, what else do you need to know about the mission? With the help of NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, Orion will enter lunar orbit. According to Bill Nelson, the 32-story rocket is the most potent structure ever built. Before Orion eventually separates from the rocket to start its solo mission toward the moon, traveling farther than any previous spacecraft designed for humans, Nelson said, the pair will launch from Florida's Kennedy Space Center. The ability of Orion to return to Earth at the end of its mission is one of the mission's main goals. Nelson said that Orion will enter the planet's atmosphere at 32 times the speed of sound, making the re-entry quicker and hotter than any spacecraft that has gone before. Now, be careful there, Orion. We don't want any space accidents. It seems as if the large, state-of-the-art heat shield is intended to protect the spaceship throughout the journey and prevent any mishaps. Fingers crossed. The ultimate test to gauge its success will be whether Orion safely returns through a splash landing and retrieval in the Pacific Ocean. But as it always does, fate has other plans for the mission. Let's learn more about that. During the last days of August, Artemis was right on the edge of launching, but Artemis is still very much on Earth and hasn't left once. So, what happened? Apparently, on August 29, 2022, fueling was supposed to start just after midnight, but because of offshore storms, it didn't start until 1.13 a.m. Engine 3 of the rocket's four engines was found to be above the maximum permissible temperature limit for launch before the scheduled launch at 8.33 a.m. Other technical issues included a fuel leak, a split in the insulating foam of the connecting joints between the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen tanks, and an 11-minute communications lag between the spacecraft and ground control. That doesn't sound good, does it? And so, engineers were forced to postpone the launch of the much-anticipated space mission that is thought to mark the beginning of a new era in space exploration. A sensor that was not used to evaluate launch readiness was found to be defective after an inquiry and had been showing the engine's temperature at an incorrectly high level. What's more, just a few days later, NASA was scheduled to launch the mission once more, but surprise, surprise, it had to be put on hold yet again. Oh no, NASA, what happened now? Apparently, here's what went down. The afternoon of September 3rd was designated for the second launch attempt, but lo and behold, a fuel supply line leak in a service arm connecting to the engine section forced the cancellation of the launch at 12.17 a.m. Uncertainty surrounded the leak's origin. The quick disconnect interface's liquid hydrogen line was overpressurized during the launch attempt, and mission operators looked into whether this may have destroyed a seal and let hydrogen escape. Now, these may sound like teeny tiny problems, but they cost millions of dollars. So, of course, NASA scrambled to fix the issue, but to no avail. And the storm wasn't over yet, quite literally. Let's take a look at what happened on the third attempt of launching Artemis. The most potent rocket ever launched by NASA has been postponed yet again, owing to a tropical storm that could intensify into a hurricane. Yikes. Kennedy Space Center in Florida intended to launch the Artemis 1 moon rocket on Tuesday. Ian, a tropical storm that may develop into a major hurricane early next week and pose a threat to the U.S. state, has grown stronger. Now, we know the rocket launch has already been delayed twice, and it's not looking good for the rocket. The current launch window, which closes on October 4th, will be missed if the SLS needs to be shielded. Jim Free, the associate administrator for the agency's Exploration Systems Development Office, said that a stepwise approach to the decision to roll back preserved a launch opportunity if conditions improved. Ian grew stronger as it passed across the Caribbean on Saturday. According to the Hurricane Center, its estimated route will carry it just south of Jamaica, over western Cuba, and into Florida. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. After all, it has to launch sometime. We just hope it's sooner rather than later. Now, here's some other news that might interest you. First up, what's this about space junk? There's a new threat on the horizon, folks, but there's no need to worry just yet. The chorus of voices calling for action to lessen the threat of space debris now includes NASA and the U.S. Congress. These discussions are likely being sparked by concerns about space debris affecting access to and utilization of Earth orbit, as well as by large satellite constellations being assembled by companies like SpaceX. 
SpaceX and a Russian anti-satellite test in November 2021 that repeatedly threatened the International Space Station operations. The potential of accidents, which can produce significant amounts of debris clouds, as the Russian ASAT test did, rises as more and more satellites are launched into orbit. Experts have emphasized that even a handful of these collisions might have a significant impact on several satellite-delivered services, including telecommunications, navigation, and weather forecasting. A bipartisan bill that was filed to Congress on September 13th aims to deal with the space trash issue. The Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation's chair, U.S. Senator Maria Cantwell, is the driving force behind the Orbital Sustainability Act. Meanwhile, on September 13th, NASA said that it had sponsored three projects that dealt with orbital debris. The initiatives, which are likewise in their early stages, aim to quantify the economic and societal issues brought on by the increase in space debris. But what about the debris on Earth, America? Will we ever catch a breath amongst all this plastic waste? Well, that's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Next up, here's what we have on moon craters. The craters on the moon have been preserved for billions of years. By examining the makeup, dimensions, and distribution of these holes in the moon's surface that were made by collisions with asteroids long ago, scientists have been able to gain knowledge about the circumstances of our early solar system. Instead of directly examining these holes' features, a team from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, chose to take a different approach. They erased hundreds of craters off the surface of the moon using computer simulations, as though reverting back time 4.25 billion years to a period before the craters existed. Then they discovered that during this time, the north and south poles of the moon migrated somewhat. The location of the poles wandered 10 degrees in latitude as the moon shifted this way and that as a result of asteroid collisions, according to research published on September 19th in the Planetary Science Journal. Understanding the evolution of the moon, specifically the state of resources like water on its surface, can be aided by knowledge of wandering poles. Oh, and just by the way, in shadowy areas close to the moon's poles, researchers have discovered frozen water, although they are unsure of its exact quantity. Some frozen water may have sublimated off the surface of the moon's poles and had been moved significantly toward a warmer, less shaded region like the equator. Fascinating, right? Lastly, we hear that NASA has added to its objectives. An updated version of NASA's Moon to Mars goals was made public on Tuesday, serving as a guide for influencing solar system exploration. As if we're not already exploring enough. Talk about being ambitious. These benchmarks in the organization's Moon to Mars exploration strategy will help define investments made by NASA, the agency's business partners, and other nations toward the Moon and beyond. NASA invited its workforce, the general public, business, and the agency's international partners to provide feedback on 50 draft objectives that agencies across our mission directorates had developed earlier this year. The agency then held two workshops with business and international partners to continue the discussion. That's a wrap. Let us know in the comments below what you think of Artemis. Will the next launch be a success? Hit like and click that subscribe button, and we'll be back with another video. Bye!